Welcome to the Rusted Garden. This is video number six in the Grow As We Grow series. It's a PERC membership series. And that means PERC members get to send in videos or questions, and then I incorporate them into the Grow As We Grow series, and I show off people's videos that are PERC members. Check out the video description for more, more information. I wanted to start in this part of my garden because I don't really show it off that much. This is a place where I'm growing flowers. Flowers are wonderful to add to the garden. And this is sort of an overgrown area. It's kind of my kitchen garden. All these raspberries and blackberries really should have been moved, but they just produce so well. I mean, look at them, that I'm just letting them go. At some point I will move them around or I'll pot up different plants. Those are the biggest blackberries I've ever grown and I'm sorry, I don't know the variety. I wanna walk over this way. We have seven or eight PERC members that send in videos, so this should be a really cool video because the gardens are from all over the United States and some people are just getting started. Other people have gardens that have filled in more like mine are. These are black raspberries. And if you've not grown them before, again, you know, I can't recall the variety, but just any black raspberry variety, I recommend. Now they do get out of control, so you have to put them in a place where they can move around, but they're absolutely delicious. So I have a lot of berries added into my garden. I want to show off Angela's garden first. She's doing a whole lot of different things with fabric pots, raised beds. She has a community garden, all kinds of different varieties of tomatoes and peppers. And she's using a kennel to build a bed. Oh, it's starting to rain. So I'm going to go edit this video. We have thunderstorms in this area. I'll be back, but let's check out Angela's video. Good morning. It is um, Wednesday, June 7th, and I am up at the community garden. And I just wanted to show you around. Um, got a lot going on in here, so um, just to give you a view, my plot is about 8 feet by 5 feet. So in the back I have some onions that I winter sowed. There's red onions in the back and then along the side here I have some Walla Walla. Um, they're looking good so far. And then I put some beans. Um, right in front of the onion. So I have some Kentucky Wonder pole beans um, right here. And I have, let's see, some bush beans um, also and some lima beans at the end. And I have four or five different types of tomatoes. I have um, a variety called Early Cascade that's supposed to, that's the name implies, getting some um, tomatoes early. I have a honeycomb, which is a kind of an orangish cherry tomato. And then I have black cream. And I also have Amish paste. I have some basil planted in between all the, the tomatoes. Um, that last year that really seemed to help keep away the, the hornworm. Because as soon as I took the basil out, it's the first time I saw a hornworm on my tomatoes last year. And I have some flowers planted. I have marigolds and cosmos throughout. And then I have four different types of peppers. I have a California Wonder. I have a Big Red Bell Pepper. I have Jimmy Nardalo. And I have Shishido peppers. So I'm really looking forward to harvests this year. So here is my garden. Um, I'm just gonna go give you an overview. There's a, I had to put a dog kennel around it to keep my dogs out of the garden bed. Um, of course, it's not doing anything to keep the squirrels and the birds out of there, but that's another story. Um, things are doing really well in the containers. The raised bed, not as so much. I don't know if it's because it's new um, and I don't have um, enough nutrients or something in there, but um, so far the containers are looking fantastic. So over um, in a gray fabric pot, I have carrots, three different kinds of carrots. Um, I have a tiny tim tomato in a five gallon with some basil. I have my three blueberry plants. Um, I have some strawberries in a little raised tower um, and a, a blackberry. Um, I have a container with some small cucumbers. They're like party 
full-size cucumbers and they are doing fantastic I've already gotten some of those to harvest um, and in my raised bed I have some alyssum growing here in the front and I have four different types of cucumbers um, and like I said I already had to pull some plants because um, they just weren't doing well and um, they looked a little diseased so I have some backup plants that I'm gonna put in and I have my zucchini and white scallop squash you can see Jax there in the background hi Jax hi buddy he really wants to get in there and I have um, this is a tomato a determinant tomato celebrity um, that I heard good things about. I have my salad table that I've been harvesting from. And I harvested some of my garlic. Um, some of it was small, so I left a few in there, which I will be getting out um, shortly. And then I have sunflowers growing in the back there next to the leaf on compost bin. Okay, I hope you enjoyed seeing my garden. Um, if you have any um, ideas on why my raised bed is not doing well, <laughs> let me know. The thunderstorm is here, but I thought this is kind of a good view. My garden's a teaching garden, so like Angela's garden, there's all kinds of different ways you can grow, which is what I really want to encourage people to do. I love the thunderstorms here in Maryland. We had a drought for like four weeks. Anyway, we are getting the rain. My garden fully grown, so to speak, with the respect to having warm weather, lots of rain now. But it, look at the sunflowers. I'm gonna try and zoom in. They were all naturally planted by nature. And I really love that look. I really wanna encourage people not to feel like you have to have a set way to grow or follow a specific way to grow. Just kind of go out there, create, and have fun. Let's check out Gail's garden because I know um, from doing my perk memberships that she's been waiting for the snow to melt. Her garden had some wonderful designs using metal raised beds and wood raised beds together. I really, really like it and it might even steal that idea. Hi everybody, this is Gail from Two Gals Vermont Homestead. Welcome to my garden. It's just starting to wake up. The snow is gone, so I thought I'd give you a little tour of what's happening. Still a lot of work to do, but we're in progress, finally. So let's go. We got all our new metal raised beds all filled up last weekend, which is kind of cool. I like the way they look on top of the wood, and th these will have big individual plants in them, which should be pretty cool. It also allows me to plant flowers and such around the outside. So we have several of them all filled up, ready to go, just waiting for the weather to warm up. Over here, we just have to refinish, uh, replace and refinish some of the soil, just turn it over, throw some more fertilizer in there, and we should be ready to go. Um, over here, another one of the small raised beds. What I'm gonna do on this one, there'll probably be lima beans, flowers, onions, over on this side, basically the same thing. Have my little teepees all set up, ready to go. <clears throat> Just need to work the soil a little bit. Our cow peas are gonna go on this one with flowers around the outside. Also have some room for some beets and celery and things of that nature. So I think they look pretty cool. Another one of the raised beds on top of the raised beds. That gives us a lot more depth to work with. My green stock is going to get fertilized today and put back together. Strawberries are doing really well. I can't believe they survived 27 degrees below zero. But there you have it. They were pretty tough little guys. Strawberries are all cleaned up. They're going to get a shot of fertilizer. Going down this aisle are garlic. Two, times, two kinds of garlic all coming up really healthy. I'm excited about that. We have two different kinds here. More strawberry babies. I didn't want to throw them out, so I stuck them in the dirt for the winter and they came across pretty well. Over here we have our asparagus and they're actually starting to come up. Just in the last two days, starting to come up. So that's pretty cool. That's progress. 
tomato bed. Have to put the trellises up this weekend. In the back, there's a, where we put all the sunflowers. This is pretty cool. I, I made this for our pole beans. It's all old uh, sunflower uh, stalks. Put them all together, <clears throat> weaved them in together. So that's gonna be our kind of cottage look for our pole beans. I did another one over here for the um, peas. Made it all out of the sunflower stalks I saved from last year. So we'll have peas over here when the peas come out, we'll put cucumbers on that. Winter sowing is still in progress. More garlic. Have some hoops ready to go if I need them. More garlic. Winter sowing. Some of the we're starting to get some uh, um, germination on those seeds. Mostly the wildflowers and the uh, perennial flowers are coming up well, as well as the cold weather crops. So. It's going to be crazy when those things all are ready to get put in the ground. So we're making a lot of progress here in Vermont. Finally, warm weather. Still a lot of those tasks to do. But I'm excited. Getting moving. Getting outside. And I hope you're doing well in your garden too. So have a great day. Thanks for visiting Vermont. Again, I think it's pretty cool that this series shows off different gardens throughout the United States and hopefully soon from different countries. I mean, the common denominator is us, our passion for gardening, but there's just so many different ways to grow food. And again, Gail, um, I think I might be stealing that idea. The metal beds look wonderful on top of the wood beds. So while we're in rain delay, this is kind of a standard storm we get in Maryland. It just hasn't been around for a while. We're going to answer Nina's questions and then I'm going to show her video. So we're going to do it a little bit backwards that I will just go through the answers and then she asks them throughout her video and gives a tour of her grow room and also her garden outside. So tiny Tims, when you're growing them indoors and even outdoors, they take about 60 to 75 days to, uh, from germination to mature and start producing fruit. So they do take a little bit of time. When you're growing sweet potato slips indoors, when the slips, the green growth gets to about four inches, you do want to drop them in water and they will root out and then after about anywhere from 14 to 21 days, you can then go ahead and plant them right into your garden. Spinach, indoor success. So you're having trouble with spinach bolting and part of what you'll see in her video is she's growing some food indoors, also growing transplants and then she's taking stuff outside. So spinach indoors usually bolts because you don't give it enough soil. So you really want a good amount of soil for the roots to grow into. Sometimes plants get the signal when the roots get bound, um, the warmth of the lights, all that really triggers early bolting. And also try, I believe it's a Blooms, Bloomsdale long standing spinach. That's a great one to grow indoors. Those lettuces that you see, I'm pretty sure, like you said, that's a red romaine or some sort of lettuce. If you're going to be moving plants, out of your garden into another part of your garden, just dig a huge root ball out of there. I mean, really big, as big as you can get so you're not disturbing the core of the roots and then you can transplant them. And then you just wanna really water them every other day for a good seven to 10 days. If you wanna move your plants into something that you can transport, if you're gonna be moving in a year, put your plants in five gallon, 10 gallons, and even 20 gallon fabric pots. They're the lightest, they're easy to move. And then, you know, the bigger the plants get, of course, the bigger you want to put, um, the bigger pot you want for your plants to go into. Your garlic, those yellow leaves, garlic usually overwinters in a lot of places and looks like the rain is starting to slow down. We'll be back out in the garden in a second. Garlic overwinters in a lot of places. The growth that stays above the soil or comes out first gets beat up, it turns yellow. Don't worry about it. You know, when your season starts to warm up a little bit, give them a nice drink of water soluble fertilizer and then just let your garlic go. And I think the peach plant or the peach tree uh, looks great. It can stand there for a little bit because it's got to grow and it's got to develop. But I think getting it into a 15 gallon container, like you're saying, will be fine. And a lot of fruit trees you can grow in containers. When you finally get it to the place you want it to be, I would recommend a bigger container just for a bigger root system, maybe 20, 30 gallons. But I think it'll do well. All right, let's check out your video. Hi, Gary. My name's Nina. Um, welcome to my basement. <laughs> um, Thank you for everything you do with the Rustic Garden. You've really taught me a lot about gardening. Um, this season's been the most successful so far. 
um, partially because of your videos, which I've been watching for a couple years now. Um, I'll just show you a little bit of what I have down here. Okay, so this is my um, tiny Tim tomato garden. I have three going here. Each of these, these are each one gallon tubs or one gallon grow bags. Um, I've got tomatoes in all of them. I'm not sure how long they take to get mature. Um, so that's a question I have. I also don't know if I should, I don't know. I was planning on gifting these to people or gifting two of them. Um, and I'm not sure if they can look like if I need to harden them or if I can just give them to people and like what I need to tell them about the light. I don't know. Okay. I have potatoes here that have been getting their nice um, uh, root systems started. They're really pretty actually. So these I want to get in the ground in the next week or two. Um, I have a little indoor herb garden. Um, I like to use particularly these three herbs when I cook. Um, so my sage is coming in nice. I've been I'm harvesting it so that it'll grow more bushy. Um, and I think I kind of over harvested my thyme. I use thyme a lot, especially when I cook steak. Um, so I don't know, I kind of over harvested it, but the new growth is green and happy. So hopefully it'll come back. Um, um, these are my sweet potatoes that I want to get out into the garden. I probably should put these into water, right? So that's my question. Um, do with the sweet potatoes, do these, do I need to put them in a glass of water? I think you've made videos about that, so maybe I'll just ask you. Um, another question I have is about spinach. I'd like to be able to have spinach in the house for making smoothies and having salads on a regular basis, but every time I've tried to grow spinach, I've tried to grow spinach, it has bolted. These are um, some of my melon seeds that I'm trying to bring back to life. These ones came back to life really happy and nice. And these ones are, they're getting there too. Their new growth is really cute and happy. So these are sugar baby water balance. These are sugar cube cantaloupes. Um, but these honeydews, like they really almost died and they're coming back, which is nice. Um, and then these are, I think, I don't know, these were mystery seeds, so maybe you can help me figure out. I think this is just red romaine lettuce or something like that. I had ordered seeds, I don't know what they are. They weren't labeled on the package, um, and I can't figure out, just based on my order history, what they are. Okay, this is another area of my basement um, where I have a few other seedlings going. So, um, these are all of my tomato plants. I have four varieties, and I have happy um, plants in all four varieties. You, it was, um, you told me that I should add some fertilizer, and I can't believe I hadn't been fertilizing them. <laughs> um, and so they have been so much better since I gave them a little bit of fertilizer. Um, but I'm happy about the tomatoes. They look pretty. I'm going to give some of these to my parents who love tomatoes. Some cucumbers that look good. Um, here in Colorado, our frost date is pretty late, or our last frost date is pretty late. So I did some cucumbers inside just so that um, I have them ready to go outside in the next few weeks here. Okay, now I'm outside in my garden. Um, and apologies, it is a work in progress, and I mean that, but... Okay, so these are my raised beds. I'm getting rid of this one. You can see it's kind of being deconstructed. I'm going to replant. I have um, some Swiss chard that re it lived through the winter. So this is some giant Swiss chard that's growing. This is some red chard that lived through the winter. And um, just started growing, and same with these. So... Um, move those. I'm not exactly sure what the best strategy is or if it's going to kill them with shock, um, but I was wondering how big of bags I need for growing um, lettuce like greens like this. Um, I'm going to be moving in about a year and so I'm trying to have most of my garden in grow bags for ease of the move. So um, any tips for what size I need? Can I put these both in like a five gallon or something? Please advise on that. Yeah. I'm growing garlic for the first time and I'm just wondering, is it bad that parts of these are yellowing? Oops, sorry, I guess I accidentally paused it. Um, I was just wondering, is it bad that parts of these are yellowing um, or is that just part of the growing process of the garlic? Um, and again, I'm sorry it's raining. It doesn't rain this much in Colorado. Um, but I'm just not sure how long the garlic should be in there, if it should be, um, like when it should be harvested. I've just never, I'm excited that I have so many plants, I'm just not sure what to think of it. <laughs> this year, my snap peas, I grew several and they really took off. 
Um, they're much bigger than last year. <laughs> I didn't know snap pea plants could get this big, actually. Um, so they're doing good. I actually picked some of them off um, and ate them earlier. They're doing really well. Okay, I also have, this is, this is a baby peach tree. Um, I purposefully got one that is cold tolerant, so it can live in Colorado, um, or frost tolerant. But now that I have this baby peach tree sprout, I don't know what to do with it. I was planning on having it, because it takes time to grow, so I was planning on having it maybe in a 15 gallon grow bag for this year, and then when my husband and I move to our permanent house, I can plant it in the ground and just let it grow from there. Let me know if that's crazy, if that's a stupid idea. We get storms like that all the time in Maryland. That's why I still pretty much water by hand out here. If you are getting storms like that, you're getting a good one inch of rain, that can, you know, kind of pass for a watering. But you really do want to make sure you get a good inch of watering in. And I just want to say, Nina, that was certainly not a dumb question. No questions are stupid. Um, I really appreciate it. And part of the Perk memberships is really, it's about mentoring. So I really appreciate all those questions and I encourage people to leave comments, uh, leave your questions, and you know, I'll, I'll try and answer as many as that I can, as many as I can. Now, blackberries over here, these are Arapaho variety. This variety, I did remember, they're a clumping variety. They don't get as big as the ones that I showed you but they're absolutely delicious. So that's my fruit section. It's doing really, really well. Now we pass by, let me spin around slowly. Here's, you know, more of the sunflowers. I mean, it's just amazing. It's June 25th or 6th, and I have flowering uh, sunflowers right now. And again, they just seeded themselves over the winter, hung out, and you know, they're beautiful now. So coming around this way, you're gonna see all kinds of different ways that I'm growing vertical towers. Let's go to Brent. He's really kind of maximizing how he's using five and 10 gallon containers. The plants look really healthy and he's going to give you a lot of excellent suggestions for um, really gardening in containers, but the plant varieties look um, brilliant. I mean, they're growing really well. So you'll have some ideas of what maybe you want to grow based on what he's growing and you can see how it's doing. All right, let's go over to his video. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm gonna sort of profile and focus on uh, container gardening. For, and this is a section on really just eight feet from me to the next neighbor and the fence line. And I've got 13 potatoes growing in different containers. They're all in Lowe's containers. I know Gary's talked about this before. It's a really great way to have a cheap, affordable, uh, five gallon container to grow and they're all doing really great. I even have a uh, giant pumpkin growing out of this container here um, and I have multiple sowings going on. These are the earliest planted. These were planted last October in containers so you can do this and the reason I did these um, so these are hard neck garlics. This is the music variety. If anybody looks them up, they do really, really well in this area. You can see that they're already starting to um, form their scapes, which we really love here. Very simple. Um, I have kale that is desperately ready to be harvested. I have these cages around because of rabbits. We have a lot of them um, and a Brussels sprout that is looking really, really nice. Um, I'm about ready to trim the top off and try to get some Brussels sprout formations here. Just running across the front here, I've got a couple of raspberry plants that I picked up on sale, which is really nice. I added some annuals in the front just to kind of give it some pop, some color. Um, and then also I have a banana plant that I overwintered indoors. Um, he looks a little rough right now, but as soon as the temperatures warm up, he's really gonna uh, sprout and be a lot happier. Moving up on my wraparound uh, porch, I've got another Brussels sprout, cucumber in there, some carrots that are doing really great. You can grow them in containers as long as they're super deep. These are gonna be great carrots to harvest. Uh, another larger tomato, several cucumbers in about a 10 gallon container, um, growing in a really small container, a uh, container uh, compact type cherry tomato. 
So I'm really happy about that. I think that's a patio choice red in there. The Greenstock Tower, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm doing a combination of peas and then um, the Gypsy Hybrid Broccoli tends to do really well. And the heads are just starting to form there. So I'm really, really happy about how big they are for the containers. And uh, I'm gonna have some really nice heads to harvest here. Wrapping around here, I have some smaller containers so you can do smaller type peas. These are the Tom Thumbs. They don't get large at all. So I'm really happy to be able to continue to, to get some pea growth here. I've got lots and lots of celery. We like got some dill going on for my cucumbers uh, that I'm going to be doing some pickling. Um, some peas that weren't trellised correctly. Um, some early um, dwarf sized peppers. This is uh, the potapino and it stays very, very, very compact. Got some more celery, which still does pretty darn well in these containers. You can see how uh, thick they've gotten. Just some other. Moving around the corner, we have a couple of tomatoes. These are both the Silettes variety. I believe that's how you say it. Um, really nice compact variety. Gives me about 10 to 20 tomatoes per plant and just growing in these smaller containers. You can see the blossoms off of there. I really like this variety. It just does so well in my area. Moving on to the peppers. We've got a lot of peppers here that I have in containers. Most of them are doubles planting together. As you know, you can plant a lot of them together. Moving to the front here, we've got a variety of different tomato plants, uh, notably the silvery fir. This is my favorite of all of them. The leaves are just so beautiful and they're very unique. Thank you for viewing my garden and hopefully this gave you some sort of inspiration to grow in containers, even if you live in a very small space. Thank you, Brent. The whole key to container gardening is to make sure you're watering them regularly. If those containers just dry out once all the way through, it's really going to damage how well your plants do. And you want to keep up with the fertilizer. Of course, when your plants are smaller, they need less fertilizer. You can hear the thunder. Maybe round two will be coming here in a second. You really want to, when they're smaller, they don't need as much fertilizer. They don't need as much water. But as they get larger, you may have to feed your plants every seven to 10 days, depending on what you're growing in there. And you may also have to be watering twice a day. A large tomato in any size container, and some of them are growing really well in smaller containers, are just gonna be, need, you're just gonna need to water them more frequently. So cucumber plants, this is my first wave starting to go up the trellis. This is a bush variety. And again, wave number one. I really recommend, I've been talking about that in videos, to plant your um, cucumbers in succession. So I have these in, we passed some back there. I don't know if you saw them, that was wave two. And I have wave three in actually over here. This is wave three and a half, because I did some about a week before this. But the cucumbers are just planted over, once the plants germinate, they're growing. Then I wait about two to three weeks, maybe four weeks, and then I plant another round of cucumbers in there, all by seed. They do really well that way. They're gonna grow really quickly when the temperatures start to warm up. And this way, as these get beat up, even though I'm taking care of them, I'm not gonna try and save plants that are just beyond hope, sadly. So I'll pull them out. I will have already gotten great production out of them. And then I'll have other cucumber plants that are coming up and ready to go. And I do that a lot for different um, crops for my summer plants, like squash, zucchini, etc. Here's my container area that I've been cleaning up. As you walk through my garden, you'll see different setups. You certainly don't need a garden this large. Again, it's a teaching garden, but just take the styles that you like, the containers that you like, and give it a try. Let's go over to Dan's garden. He's doing a lot with self-wicking containers, doing a lot of work with berries, flowers, and vegetables, and he literally is growing around the entire side of his house and into the driveway. He's really successful in growing tomatoes in small containers, and again, keep in mind, you can grow things in smaller containers, just keep up on the water and the fertilizing. Let's check out Dan's garden. Well, hey everybody. Hey Gary. This is Dan. I'm in Maryland. I was gonna start out front 
but I saw my baby rabbit was out here. I thought I'd get a shot of him. That's my berry garden around the side. Not a lot of these boxes, self-watering containers. It's about seven gallons of soil and two or three gallons of water inside. This is this little Roma plant I started inside a long time back in February. Look at that little pot. Gary, I never thought I'd like flowers till I uh, got some from you and started growing them around here. I think I'm hooked. Little peas. Yeah, I've always grown the marigolds, but uh, got some strange sunflower. Look at that big cosmos. I got celery. It's one of those black eyed seasons. Another. Sunflower. And, uh, yeah. Ended up planting the top side. Oops, oops, sorry. Oops, top side of my uh, my tower. And I forgot to uh, plant the bottom, so that's where the bottom ended up. Uh, there's a tomato and a pepper on each side, and up top, of course, got some kale. All right. Oh man. Yeah, I had hoped to grow a bunch of peas up this trellis, and. Uh, you know, maybe I'm not getting enough sun out here, but uh, the kale does well, and always tomatoes do well out here. And uh, yeah, speaking of tomatoes, I wanted to show you these. This is a soil experiment that I started inside from seeds. And <sighs> been growing since February. Look at that little pot. That's like three gallons. And. Uh, I don't know if you can make out the plant, but it's taller than me. And that's a, that's that's one. And this was a split test. This one's a little bigger than the pot. And it's doing a little better. Of that other one had a rough start. It got it got its main stem knocked off. This one's doing much much better but it's had an easier life All right. again and down there that's more peas I thought would do a lot better I figured they'd be as tall well as tall as this trellis by now but anyway all right Gary might not know what this is because he's like from Pennsylvania or something but we call that a crab trap, hon. And I just put my t-shirt in there and uh, a few viney climbies. All right, well, I'm into berries. I got potted golden raspberries. I got a lot of uh, Black raspberries. They got to get in the ground somewhere. But uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. I'll show you some more later. Take care. Thanks so much, Dan. And just if you are curious, I mean, it rained maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and I've been, you know, pulling out the plants out of my containers, mostly the the uh, cool weather crops. This is how much rain we got. Let's see if I can do this without pouring it on my feet. There we go. In that short amount of time. Well, it's hard to tell, but it's a ton of rain. So you really want to keep an eye on whether or not you're getting enough rain to kind of replace the watering. And I want to stress that because watering 
is usually what we do the worst. For whatever reason, you know, we don't water enough. And by watering more, you're going to get plants, instead of plants just kind of producing, they're really, really going to thrive for you. Coming outside here, and you can see all of my lawn. I've let my lawn transition over to clover and all kinds of different things. I have a no-dig garden here. I want to show you Linda's video because I think it's really interesting. One of the things that she's doing is she is transforming her front lawn into, into garden beds. And those plants are going to require less water, they're going to look beautiful, and you just don't necessarily need a ton of lawn. It's a lot of work. Grass doesn't do much for anybody, including insects. So by, you know, removing some of your lawn, putting in plants that are more water tolerant, that you have to care, le care for less, use less fertilizers, it's good for the environment. Plus it also often gives, you know, the good insects and animals a place to live. So let's check out her video. Hi everyone, this is Linda, gardening in Staten Island, New York. This is my front garden. I'm starting in the front today because I'm actually going to be replacing some of the uh, lawn in my front garden with um, a drought tolerant sedum. And I want to show you the beginning, what it looked like before, and then I'm going to show you the final. Okay, so this is about one week later. It didn't take me a week to get this done. It actually took a couple of days, believe it or not. Um, and I'm, I didn't finish the entire uh, front lawn. I was only able to get to one section, about maybe a third. And um, this is um, Sedum Dragon's Blood. It's supposed to spread very well. And so I'm hoping that um, it will do so and it'll fill out the, the sections that are mulched. Um, for the sections that are not mulched yet and that are not uh, planted yet, what I'm going to be doing is um, I bought some small starts. I'm going to be growing some transplants from seeds and I'm also going to be directly seeding um, um, the, uh, the sedum in the areas that I have not planted yet. So on both sides, I'll be working on doing that and um, hope to get that done relatively quickly. But I don't think that it'll take, it'll take about, I think, three years or so for it to really fill out the way that I'd like it to. So today is June 10th and um, this is the um, backyard garden. Um, one of the major things that I I guess that I accomplished is that I guess things are growing so looking on the positive side um, I planted some new things I've transplanted some plants um, and everything is growing pretty well I haven't really had any kind of insect problem um, I ended up growing way more broccoli than I need and I think things are bolting because I'm just not able to uh, harvest them quick enough that's always been a little bit of a struggle. But um, one of the things I hope to accomplish within the next week or so is putting in a drip irrigation system. I need to find a way to make gardening easier for me um, based upon my time and resources. Um, that's why I'm changing the front yard of the grass to um, a more drought tolerant plant, the sedum. Um, but I'm happy with everything. Um, things came back um, things came back better than they did last year to a certain extent. Um, you know, uh, I just haven't had the time really to devote to uh, taking care of my garden the way I have in the past. Um, but there's still time. So this is Linda June 10th. My garden. I guess this is considered early spring, early summer, late spring. Thanks everybody. We've gotten to see Linda's backyard garden, the vegetable garden, flowers, that are, that's really on a slope, just take off. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And that just shows you that you don't need the perfect conditions to grow. Like I'm lucky enough to have 10, 12 hours of sun, flat land, kind of picked that out when I bought my house. 
but she's growing wonderfully in an area that's a little bit smaller, sloped, some shade, and her plants look really, really wonderful too. Compost, I'm gonna just give it a quick plug. A lot of times we don't have space. You can see everybody has different sized gardens. Some of the videos you're seeing today, people have acres, some people are in a townhouse. You can't always compost, but when you're able to get to that point, I highly recommend it. It's gonna save you a lot of money, and it is really what your plants um, need to grow. You, you save money because you don't have to buy any organic fertilizers. You just drop compost out. There's a rabbit that's been getting into my garden back here. This is my second garden. Uh, I want to go in there and just show you what's happening. I really like this garden. It's a good size, 16 by 16, maybe 20 by 20. Perfect for a family of four or less. You can grow a lot in here. Now, I totally understand. I, you know, kind of upscaled as I got older, you know, from 0.2 acres to 2 acres, so I have more room. Let's check out Jordan's garden. He's growing in a townhouse and he's making a great use of using containers and raised beds around his property, maximizing that space. And we also get to take a look at what Jordan's doing at his community garden. If you don't have space, look around your area. A lot of times you can find community gardens. Sometimes you have to get on a wait list, but they're a great way to grow too. It gives you something to grow outside of your smaller space and it's a lot of fun. All right, well, here we are front yard, just a small townhouse, but you do what you can with what you got, right? Um, so we have some lavender here in a pot. This bed, uh, we got six eggplant, some uh, bunching onions on the very edge, some parsley there, some bulbing onions through the middle, um, a couple different herbs there, some rosemary and thyme. Uh, marigolds throughout and then cucumbers on the very edge so and then this is a bed that I built it's got potatoes in it this year um, came up a little sparse but looking pretty good hopefully they'll do well um, this one here got some carrots coming up finally some beets kohlrabi and then I've put some radishes and more carrots and basil in here that haven't come up yet. Got a Meyer lemon tree that started flowering just recently. Not sure if I'm gonna get fruit yet or not, but there's that. We have some strawberries. Strawberry tower with a whole bunch of green strawberries. Nothing ripe yet, but green strawberries everywhere. So well, then we have some flowers for the pollinators. Over here we have a pot with zucchini. I got to thin one of these out. I just don't have the heart to do it. Some raspberries and more bunching onions. Some moss roses there. And then these two are Swiss chard. I just planted. They haven't come up yet. Um, I did have broccoli in here, but it got hailed out, so I tore it up and uh, put some Swiss chard. I've never grown Swiss chard. We'll see how it does. This is the big bed. Um, it's got tomatoes for the most part. I got nine tomatoes in here. I'm gonna single stem these steaks. And, uh, they're looking pretty good. Starting to get some blooms. down the middle. I'm gonna pick up, pick out each uh, the alternate ones and use them as smaller onions throughout the season. Marigolds everywhere. Um, some more herbs up there. I've got some rosemary. More flowers. more flowers on the fence for the neighbors and for the pollinators. So this is about half my garden. I also have three plots over in the community garden, which I'll see if I can get for you also. <clears throat> well, here we are in the community garden. I suppose I forgot to say 
on the other video. Um, I'm in north central Colorado, north of Denver area. So this is my one of my beds. Um, got some bush beans here coming up, so they'll be good. Um, have some. There's I have to thin them out, but there's going to be four plants. They're bush varieties of winter squash. So never tried that. We'll see if they, how they work. I've got seven tomato plants here. This first row here is uh, Romas, or San Marzano Roma style. Uh, that one there is a Tigerella. The yellow plum, another Tigerella, and a blush. So that's one bed. We'll see how they do. Got another bed here. This is a Tigerella, I think. Got a pepper in the middle. And that's a, a yellow plum again. Some Egyptian walking onions throughout that I didn't want to tear out. Uh, some scallop squash and some uh, lemon squash. They're like a summer squash shaped like a lemon. Also bush varieties. There's an extra sweet potato plant that I didn't have anywhere for. Some pole beans coming up. The trellis up this paddle, uh, trellis here. Some uh, Rocky Ford cantaloupe there and there. Let's see, that one there's a bush variety of cucumber, or sorry, um, watermelon. Kelly sweet bush, I think it's called. Some flowers. There's another one of the bush cucumbers. And then here we have three crimson sweet um, watermelon. I said that's a cucumber, that's a watermelon also. So I sprinkled some pepper flakes around here. Seem like the neighborhood cats are using these as a litter box. So hopefully that'll deter them. And then here on the very edge we have some um, sugar baby watermelon. I'm gonna try to trellis up this. This is my neighbor's bed. Um, we're kind of uh, co-mingling essentially. And then over here, I have a small bed of sweet potatoes. Never grown sweet potatoes, so we will see how these do. So, well, I suppose that's it. A lot of other people have planted their community plots. It looks great. So, all right. Thank you so much, Jordan. In this space, and I really like what you did with the space around the townhouse. It looks really, really good, including the flowers at the end for neighbors and for yourself. 20 gallon containers. We were talking about different size containers earlier. These are perfect for growing just about anything and they're pretty easy to move. You might need you know, a second person to help you move them. These are all potatoes. They're doing really well. These are gonna be harvested probably in three to four weeks. This was my second round of potatoes. I plant them in succession too. And I will actually put in another round of red Pontiacs bought at the grocery store, and maybe some Yukon Golds in a couple of weeks once these are coming out. You can actually grow potatoes throughout the season in many areas. Kind of getting overgrown in there, but I have onions, some eggplant. That is a Saras Galapagos tomato plant. And those seeds sat in my house for seven years. I was able to get some to germinate, so I'm kind of bringing them back. Other crops, beans, different kinds of cabbages. This space isn't fully maximized because sometimes I take on more than I can really kind of handle. But I'll get in here get these planted up with some more things. Here are cucumbers, by the way, by the way real quick. That was uh, actually round three, and they're much bigger than the rounds three and a half that I showed you. So just a week's difference. The cucumbers really take off. Never, generally speaking, once you've tried to save a beat-up plant, never go past what the plant's really gonna be able to give back to you. Pull them out and then go ahead and plant again. The summer crops I want to stress from seed, once they germinate, they're going to be ready in like 45 days. All right, let's walk back inside the garden. Well, the rain is starting to fall again. I have to angle the camera downward a little bit so I don't get water all over the lens. Just want to show you the sunflowers. We're going to take a look at the last entry, so to speak. Uh, last but not least, Rebecca's garden. She has a no-dig garden. She's in Maryland Zone 7. She has sunflowers that are self-seeding, and she's going to show you 
what she's doing with flowers throughout her garden. Our gardens look similar. Um, again, similar zone. I really enjoy this series. And again, I want to encourage people that are PERC members to send in videos, send in questions. You don't need to be perfect. I can help you uh, edit the videos if you can get me the videos. So let's check out Rebecca's garden. Hey everybody, my name is Rebecca. I garden in um, Central Virginia Zone 7A. And this is my garden. You've seen it before, but now it's coming to life a little bit more. Um, I am a no-dig gardener. And today mainly what I'd like to show you is, uh, I'm gonna highlight, is how I actually use a lot of flowers and herbs in my garden. I'm, I'm standing at the north end and I'm looking due south at this point, and that's to get maximum light. Um, as you can see, I have planted both inside my fence and outside. Um, I have uh, some extra tomatoes and things like that um, on the outside, but I also have a ton of perennials and herbs. Uh, these are daisies. This is um, hyssop that is growing. That's a perennial herb. Um, my perennial onions are there as well. I haven't finished plant. I haven't finished planting my herbs yet and my flowers on the outside. But wherever I have tomatoes growing, I will also plant marigolds and basil. Looking down the north side on the exterior, you come across another perennial patch. Um, this is about to burst into color. And this is my newest project. I am creating a row of uh, roses. These are knockout roses. That's so when I look out from my bedroom window up there or drive in like that car, where that car is parked, you'll see a nice beautiful row of roses blooming. Peeking over the garden fence, you'll see my peas growing, some of my snow peas and sugar snap peas. And like Gary was showing us um, Sunday class today, I have a lot of volunteer sunflowers and I just let Down them on the edge, you'll see nasturtiums that are growing. Um, I also have lemon balm. Here's monarda, sage, echinacea, tarragon, and black-eyed Susans growing on the outside there. Here's my hops tunnel. And on the other side, I have a passion flower vine, which I'm actually growing in a pot this year. I've heard both positive and negative things about passion flower vines, so I thought I'd grow it in a pot just to see how it did. Now I'm on the south and east exterior of my garden, and you can see my sweet peppers all growing on the outside as well as the inside, along with a plant I called Audrey. She's an overgrown, very large, strangely shaped sunflower volunteer. Now I'm on now I'm on the south end and looking into this little penned in area. This is where I'm growing my sweet potatoes this year, which I planted earlier this week. Looking through the southern arch on either side, there are flowers and vines that are plant planted. Looking into the garden, you'll see my sauce patch tomatoes. Some of my potatoes, I have potatoes growing everywhere. But everywhere you see any kind of every single plant every single bed has flowers Here's growing colossal cilantro plant that i made a video about this week again flowers everywhere i have echinacea growing i have zinnias growing i have yarrow i have monarda mixed in with a few random hot peppers here and there again this just is a border going to be a border of flowers this is my greatly expanded area this year i had this central bed part of it half of it last year in these sunken pots but I added a Ruth Stout potato bed another arch which will have some um, scarlet runner beans and tomatoes running up it and uh, a little hard to see against the green but I have two rows of blueberries and then some newly transplanted blackberries in the back again more flowers more flowers and this is going to have a pumpkin growing in the center of this long I'm just into the front, the main gate, and I just want you to kind of get a sense of the scope of my garden at this at this point. Um, under the covers, I have eggplant. I'm trying to protect them from flea beetles, and this is my brassica row. I just wanted to peek under the hood of my brassica patch and show you some of these glorious cabbages. This having the shade cloth has really made a difference, I think, and I've never been able to grow cabbages like this and brassicas quite like this. It's so dense in here. This is my patch that was mainly is greens and beans this year, as well as now carrots and peas and radishes are coming out. But here again, I have calendula mixed in. More calendula on this side growing with monarda next to some lettuce and cucumbers that will grow up this trellis, as well as nasturtiums. Here are my first zucchini and yellow squash that I'm growing. I grew from seed and transplanted out. They're gonna have their first squash very soon. And in this quarter, I have some gladiolas growing. 
as well as calendula growing next to this uh, these collards here. And again, I just tuck in herbs. I tuck in flowers everywhere that I am growing. Here are my parsnips, which you know I love. So thanks for letting me share my garden with you today. Take care, bye. Thanks, Rebecca. I really like what you're doing with flowers. This is wild sage. I'm letting it blend in with my cucumbers have marigolds over there, and I have lots of flowers throughout my garden. Just a watermelon real quick. This is my second wave of cucumbers that I planted by seed. Tops have been chewed up. A fence is only as good as you leave the gate closed, but a deer got in here and ate a lot of it. I really like this series. I've been doing it for, I forget how long we've been actually doing this together, but this is uh, video number six. So we're getting to see everybody's gardens kind of start small, get growing. I know that Gale is just getting planting. It's really, really a lot of fun for me, so I greatly appreciate it. If you are PERC members, please send in videos, send in questions. Um, don't worry about how good your video skills are. Just move the camera slowly. Let people know where you're from. I will help you out with editing if you can get me the videos. So I think we'll end here. If you're not a PERC member, check out the video description. It'll give you a little bit more information about how to become a PERC member. The towers are looking really good. These are green stalk garden towers. They're really great for growing peppers, have lots of strawberries in there. All right, looks like another storm is gonna roll in today. This is what I do love about Maryland. It does make it a little bit difficult sometimes when you're trying to shoot a video. All right, you guys have a great week in your gardens. I hope you get a chance to share them with family and friends. Thanks for watching.